Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about the AWS Global Infrastructure. So what is the AWS Global Infrastructure? The AWS Infrastructure is built around regions and availability zones. If we go back to this picture, you can see that these circles, each circle represents a region. Each orange circle represents a region that's already present and a green circle represents an upcoming region around the world. So what is a region? A region is just a separate area in the world. Going back to this slide, you know, you can see that each region, they are separate from each other. And although you might see here, you know, they're kind of clustered, but they are still hundreds of miles apart. This one is in Canada and this one is in Northern Virginia near Washington DC in the United States. So each region is a separate geographic area. Each region has multiple isolated locations known as availability zones. Now a region consists of many availability zones. Now we have established the relationship between region and availability zone. Let's go back to the picture one more time. This number you see on each circle, inside of each circle is how many availability zones are present in this region, right? So in this region right here, six availability zones are present. And I can say th that this is the US East one because US East one has the highest number of availability zones. Now let's look at availability zones. In the last slide we talked how each region has multiple isolated locations known as availability zones. Now availability zones are locations that consist of one or more data centers. Now we're getting closer to where your servers are actually living, right? One availability zones may have one or more data centers. Obviously there has to be one data center. But it can have one or more data centers and availability zones or AZs are physically separated and isolated and are connected with low latency, high throughput and highly redundant networking. Let's make a note of these things. Now let's look at an example. When you launch an EC2 instance, you can select an availability zone. Now let's go to the AWS management console real quick. So if you have used the AWS management console right in here is the name of your region so right now I'm here in Northern Virginia US East 1 there's also another US East region US East 2 which is Ohio and there's US West US West and there's a few more in Asia Europe South America now when I'm trying to launch an EC2 instance and when I'm inside a certain region, if I launch an instance and go to the third page, I can choose where to put my EC2 instance. You know, from these six availability zones, I can put them, you know, specifically in a certain availability zone. So that's possible with AWS. So this is the idea. If your servers fail in one AZ, then you have another AZ where you have hopefully designed your architecture to use multiple availability zones. And if one zone fails, the other zone is still working. And that's the idea behind separating them, isolating them. And that's why if we go back to the previous slide, the low latency is important because you know you have multiple EC2 instances in multiple availability zones and you know they need to talk to each other quickly with low latency and high throughput and that's why the AZs are connected with those low latency high throughput and highly redundant networking now on top of all this you know when AWS chooses a, a location for availability zone they make sure that there's no flooding history uh, they get multiple redundant power sources from different companies get they get backup power just to make sure that the data centers are running you know even in extreme cases 
Now, real quick, let's look at how you know the, the syntax work with naming regions and availability zones. So a region is named like this, US-East-1. And inside of this region, there is multiple availability zones, US-East-1A, US-East-1B, C, D, E, and F. These regions and availability zones together they make the AWS global infrastructure. Now, before we stop, really quick, you might be thinking, what about edge locations, right? There's also edge locations. I never mentioned them in this video. Amazon has more points of presence with edge locations, right? There's multiple edge locations around the world, and these locations are smaller locations that cache your data right that can cache your data so that you know the data is closer to the customer and they the customers can access your data faster and cloudfront is the service on aws that will let you use uh, the edge locations and store and cache data near the customer if you go to this page the link is provided in the description below you can see the map of the global infrastructure with the regions, upcoming regions. And if you scroll down under each region, you can also see the edge network locations, right? Now, these are independent of availability zones and regions. There's one in Georgia, there's one in Massachusetts, there's one in many, many places. These, these are smaller locations. In South America, there's these edge locations. In Europe and Africa, there's these edge locations and so on. So I thought I would share the edge locations here as well because they are part of the AWS global infrastructure. And as you can see, you know, they are placed in the same page where AWS describes what the global infrastructure is. All right, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you liked this video, please hit the like button, uh, subscribe to our channel. You can also find our courses on Udemy and all, also on our website. Check the links in the description that has all the pages I've mentioned here and some other pages and also links to our courses. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.